Hi folks, welcome back to Hopes to Families Ministries. When I first became a Christian, boy, I was naive. I really lived in a wee bubble. I thought my problems is all over. I'm gonna have a perfect marriage. I'm gonna have these amazing kids now that's not gonna fight, that's never gonna say bad words, that are gonna be just little angels and boys. Was that anything but the truth? It was nearly like, when I became a Christian, it seemed like things was going from bad to worse. All of a sudden, my marriage was attacked. My work was attacked. There was loads of things in my personal life that had got really hard and I was really struggling. And I was like, God, this, this wasn't what I thought. This wasn't the plan. I thought when I became a Christian, life was going to get easy and it seems to be getting worse. What is happening? And it was only when I became more of a mature Christian. When I started to read my Bible more and realise that it was the devil, that he hated me and he hates you. The devil knew that I was going to heaven now. You see, before when, when I thought things wasn't as bad, I was no threat to the devil because I was going to hell. But all of a sudden now, he knew that I seen the truth. That for years I was living the way he wanted me to live, in a world with drink and drugs and doing lots of other ungodly things. So so I was no threat to him. He thought, I have Fiona, she's coming to hell, so she's no problem. But as soon as I became a Christian, as soon as I became a born again, where I used to laugh years ago, and oh, born again, seeing the light, oh God help them, we creatures have no life, they're innocent, they've, they've no fun, and that was another lie. But anyway, born again, and it tells us, it doesn't matter what Bible you read it from. I have the Catholic Bible. I have what maybe the people call the Protestant Bible, the NIV, the NLT, the ESV, a list of them. And you see it every single one of them. In John 3, verse 3, Jesus says, Truly, I tell you, unless a man is born again, he will not see the kingdom of heaven. So many people, like I was, thought, I used to think, should I go to church? I believe that there's a God, so I'll go to heaven. But that's that's so wrong. That is not the truth. Because unless you're born again, unless he, like I had to do, I had to die to my old life. The night I got saved, I thought, you know what? I, I'm saying goodbye to that life. I want to be born again into God's family. I want to, to do what he's called me to do. I want to follow Jesus. So being born again, is you're saying, goodbye to your old life, you're dying to that life. You're taking up the new life of confessing, look, I'm a Christian, I follow Jesus now, I do what Jesus says. So Satan you, wow, Fiona has done this, she's going to heaven now. You know, so that's when he started to attack, he tried to destroy me, he tried to destroy my home and, and my marriage and my business, and, but he knew I have a big mouth, you see. So he knew, oh no, she's going to start telling people the truth. Once she has, has, seeing the truth herself, she's going to tell it to people. And I am going to tell it to people. <laughs> and hope you're listening and I'm telling it to you now. It tells you in the Bible. It doesn't tell you go to, to, to Mass or church every week and do good things and that will get you to heaven. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that. It tells you, you must be born again. You must die to that old life and confess that, you know what? I am a Christian. So here it was. That's what I decided to do. So he knew that she's guaranteed, she's getting to heaven. They don't have to hope I'm gonna get there someday. I know I'm getting there. I'm now a child of God. So so here he was, he started to attack and was throwing things at me and trying to wear me out and bring me down. This is what he does. But in the book of Habakkuk, in the Bible, there's this prophet and there's three chapters in it. And it says twice he goes to God with a complaint, but twice God answers him. And here's what Habakkuk says to God. He says to him, How long, O Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. Must I forever see these evil deeds? Why must I watch all this misery wherever I look? He says, I see destruction and violence. And I'm surrounded with people who love to fight and argue. Maybe you're surrounded tonight with those kind of people. Maybe you're even in a family with these people that just love to cause rows and argue. Maybe you're in a relationship and that's all you're seeing right now is, is rows 
and fights. And you're like, God, and you're crying out, God, where are you? You know, can you not see what's happening here? Here, Habakkuk. And I feel like Habakkuk. There was nights where I had cried out to God. I says, you know, I thought my life was going to be easy when I became a Christian. And as I said earlier, it got worse. And I remember crying out to God. I think, God, where are you? You know, can you not hear me? Can you not see what's happening in my life? And it's only now when I look back, every time God had his hand over me and protection. Because you know what he says to Habakkuk? After Habakkuk came and cried all this out to God, do you know what God said? It says, God replied. He says, look around at the nations. Look and be amazed. He says, for I am doing something in your own day. Something you wouldn't believe, even if somebody told you about it. So here God said to Habakkuk, I am doing things uh, that will astound you, that will amaze you, that even if people come up and told it to you, Habakkuk, you wouldn't believe it. And that's what God is saying to you tonight too. He's saying, I am doing something. Although you think, God, you can't hear me, you're not helping me, God wants you to know tonight, oh, I am helping you. And I'm doing something. But you wouldn't understand it. Because if somebody told it to you, you couldn't even grasp it, you couldn't comprehend. He says, but it's something amazing. It's something in your favour. You're a child of God. He tells us no weapon formed against you will prosper. The weapons will be formed. Lies will be formed against you. Slander will be formed against you. Corruption and, and everything. There's going to be things formed against you to attack you. But God says it won't prosper. It's not going to be able to harm you. We have to wait. Sometimes our biggest problem is, is waiting. We don't have the patience. We want it here and now. And God is saying, I want you to sit back. I want you to wait patiently because my timing is the perfect timing. God just wants you to be reassured tonight that he hears you, that he hears your cries. He responded to Habakkuk and he is responding to you to tell you, I am doing something. You aren't on your own. But I want you to trust me. I want you to keep your faith. Don't let the devil discourage you and take your eyes off me. God's doing something. And it's something amazing. And it's something that you'll never even get your mind around or head around. Be encouraged tonight that when God is for you, who can be against you? That God takes the impossible situations and makes them possible. Keep praying and keep trusting God. Bring your, your, your worries and your pain and your complaints to God. Because he hears you and he also answers you. I know there's people tonight and you are broken. You are absolutely devastated. You are crying yourself to sleep. Your marriage has been attacked. Your homes, your finances, your mental health, your physical health. And you are crying out and God wants you just to know that he is doing something. And that he's for you. So folks, be blessed, be encouraged and God bless.